even the all even the used vehicles at at this point, following the national um, uh, automotive development council uh, uh, framework, we have to begin to rethink uh, this tariff system. I think that we should increase tariffs on imported vehicles to increase the or to stimulate production in Nigeria. We have a lot of people who have already set up their assembly plants. We start with the, the uh, automotive industry is also enjoying the VIP, the backward integration uh, program. We have to look into that to dissuade importation of finished items and promote in, um, assembly of shop. Sure. You are talking about on new vehicles, on new vehicles yes. which has been slashed down to about 5%. Yes. And you are talking about encouraging local production. Yes. I thought the whole essence of establishing local assembly plants is to support you know the company that establish the local assembly plant that's what i'm saying I'm, yeah. I'm saying that but if, if, if you slash the import duty on imported vehicles you are more or less making it counter productive because they will not be able to compete favorably that's what, I'm saying. Vehicles. That's what I'm saying. We should it doesn't increase. make sense. I'm saying we should increase the tariff, not reduce. Instead of reducing the tariff, increase it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's my own proposal. Okay, that's, good. that's the only way we can stimulate production that, in Nigeria. That's, good. that's it. Yes. And uh, my apologies to Senator Adada that visited me while I wasn't in office. <laughs> my, uh, my office is also undergoing renovation. And uh, I've also traveled quite a bit. Maybe one of those periods he came and I wasn't around. I want to reassure the house that it does not matter where I work from. I've been, I worked in Imo State, a rural state, for two years as commissioner for finance and coordinating economy. And this was even the, during the height of insecurity. And that did not deter me from carrying out my job or my role uh, effectively. I want to assure you that it has nothing to do with the building or the location. I'm always going to carry out my, my job or my role to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Said, reading through your presentation is very articulate. You seem to be clear about what we need to do. But listening to your explanation and some of your policies, they are completely at variance with the very beautiful presentation that you made. You did documents from you under Nigeria Trade Office Ghana. Uh, purchase of two units of project vehicles, uh, SUV, 160 million naira. Is this a Nigeria-made vehicle? One or sixty million naira. Which kind of truck is this? I mean, so they all is for is Ghana. No, no, don't make your notes. Okay. So we avoid the crossfire. <laughs> I don't want to just show that there's a huge gap between what we preach and what we do in your ministry. Understand our extent of dependence. What is the balance of trade between Nigeria and China? What is the balance of trade between Nigeria and countries other than the European Union? What is the balance of trade between Nigeria and the United Kingdom? Most of our major trading partners. And when I talk about balance of trade, delete oil. The other one is an international product. So that we can appreciate how much we have gained in terms of Ex given all the money we spent over the years on export promotion and all the institutions we've set up, whether they are banks, they are commission, whatever they are, so that we give us a window whether we are not just throwing money away. We probably have far more institutions, whether financial institutions or other commissions, with the one primary objective to promote export. So by the time you give us this figure, it will give us an idea. Number two, not be found in your office and be found elsewhere. He claimed he to know where you were. I don't know how he, whether he's tracking you. But there is one major thing that I've seen in all the 
committees that have attended, and this is something the Senate has to look at. Every time Nigeria has to travel, including your ministry, we are, I use the word, and excuse me, but we need to be brutally frank, but not brutal, brutal to people, but in terms of calling a spade a spade. We have, we always have the larger delegation of Nigerians to trade missions. Now I see your proposal, you have trade mission in Geneva. And you are going to spend almost over 1.70 billion Naira to maintain your Geneva office, which means ideally you have trade experts in that office. And when I used to go to Geneva, where Nigerian ministers call with 30 man delegation, America will use their trade officers in Geneva to attend those meetings. They are just pure technical people. In Nigeria, the minister will lead the delegation. And by the time you multiply now, rather than, I don't know what the Esther code is now, times water zone, whatever it is, you'll find that ministers in trying to help put <coughs> their people on trips, they don't attend the meetings, and they spend most of that time shopping at the expense of taxpayers. And that is space substantially why you will find huge overhead, huge overhead. I'm just asking myself, you are going to spend uh, in your ministry 900 and, that is headquarters alone, 905 million era. And sometimes when you put for two, uh, zero two Kobo, I really don't know how these numbers are generated because nobody sees Kobo anymore. It doesn't exist. <laughs> and every budget they put it there as if it was meant to be a joke. Budget is meant to be an honest statement, not a formality. So you spend so much money on overhead. Number two, you are arguing the case for waivers. For me, the most corrupt tools of government is to make law for everyone and then, for those who favor, you now, get, you now grant them waiver to breach that law. Government will be seen to be fair to all. If we are going to have fair competition, and we have opted for free market, why should we even have thing called waiver? I think my plea to Mr. Chairman, sir, is that going forward, the National Assembly has the right to legislate to curtail the power of those who exercise this discussion because they are abused. Um, Honorable Minister, be clear, this is not about you, but there has to be a day to wake up. You know, somebody asked about Volkswagen, about Pujo Automobile, about Leyland, about uh, there was one in Bauchi where they Steer. produce Steer. tractors. Steer. 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 It is our trade policies. This submission, recklessly in my view, to so-called WTO rules and so on, <laughs> and then we expose ourselves to all kinds of goods and services coming in. Let me just give you a, ask you one question. When you go to a restaurant, and as the Minister of Trade, you pick a toothpick and it's made in China. That toothpick, is it legally imported? And drawing the forex from our increasingly poverty central bank? Or how does it come in? Other our laws, should toothpick no made in Nigeria be found in the Nigeria market? I, I'm going for this ridiculous one because each time I go out, and I see toothpick, they have this small, small packaging, nice packaging, but it's, for, it's important. And then we, we, we talk about uh, promoting trade. How? So there's something you need to speak to. And, um, okay, we, time is always a problem here. Provided that next time, sir, we will not be rushed to approve money because we are in a hurry. Because those who pay taxes don't earn the money in a hurry, they, they sweat. We must be sure not assuming, sir. No, excuse me.
<laughs> custom, custom officer implements trade policies. They do not formulate the tariff policies. They collect what has been imposed on them. Yeah, but you shouldn't be tired so much that not to know the truth. <laughs> it's my father. It's my father. He knows we are good friends. So I, I just want to say, uh, Madam, looking at this thing, we spend a lot of money on the Ministry of Trade. But maybe by the time I see the balance of trade between us and our major trading partners, I will be able to see, and I would think in future, we ought to be able to say, over the past five years, this is the growth we have recorded or this is how we have targeted, so that we have overall view and I'll accept the question. Should we spend money in a ministry that is not promoting local production? I want to set up a target, sir, where we should say, for example, all the cars in Nigeria, all those tires they were using in the past, not during Mongo Park era, just in the 80s, they were in Nigeria in the early 90s. You have Machelin, you have Dunlop, you have uh, several of them that were producing tires in Nigeria using rubber that is made or planted in my part of the in my part of the country. And this, all of these are gone now. Any car you see on the road, the tire is imported. What are your plans to make a review? The reason I ask you, I didn't come to the Senate to lament. And Mr. President said during our campaign, and I, I believe he meant it. It is can do spirit. So we are not going to continue, as this budget suggests, with old traditions, right? So you need to tell us what are we going to do differently to get all the tires we are using in Nigeria made in Nigeria. The policy that brought them before was by government that says in the military, unfortunately, I mean, uh, rather uh, uh, interestingly, that says, if you want to sell tires in Nigeria, locate in Nigeria, if you want to take to clothes 200 million Nigerians, locate the textile factories in Nigeria, if you want to, because the only thing we have to sell to the world is our population. And so if you want to patronize that huge market of 200 million people, Come my friend, locate in Nigeria. That was the policy. Okay. It didn't occur by accident. And once we revise the policies, now, from what you are telling me, all the Toyotas on the road, and we have per, perhaps per capita the highest number of Toyota vehicles in Nigeria. Thank you. I'm using really watch. We you. need to have a policy that seeks to make a complete change. Otherwise, year in year, I will go through these rituals. Not you will complete your tenure in four years. Our dependence will be much more than it was before you came. That has been the lot of your predecessors, and may that not be the lot. Of you and of the Assembly. Thank you very much, uh, you, most Chair. distinguished. Uh, uh, just had everybody now that is still a comrade. Yes. Yes. Uh, Thank you, sir. So please, Thank Honorable you. Minister. They are fighting yes. for Nigeria. You don't know the danger you face by the number of people you have rendered unemployed. And now you want money for security. You have to deal with no security response. To the secret challenges we are having. Thank you very much. I must say, this is a great job for the people. No. Chairman, you are ruling. Uh, yes, next. Thank you. I have a question. <laughs> waivers, trade waivers, are they at the discretion of the minister, the, 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 the uh, presidential uh, concession? How do they come about? That's one. Secondly, trade is created by policies. Those policies, I'm sure you know that you can send things to us, the National Assembly, to approve for you. One of the things that's critical, the auto industry, if a law or a policy is not created where the biggest buyer of auto vehicles, the government. If you do not create a policy where all government bought vehicles must be assembled in Nigeria, regardless of who uses them, you can never generate sort of, um, not generate, but grow that industry. That's number one. A lot of things that we import 
you can also look at how to get policies, especially, as I said, the government is one of the biggest buyers of things. A lot of the committees we came to, and I'll be really brief, will tell you, I want two Prado Jeeps. Why do you want two Prado Jeeps? And I'll say to them, why Prado? Why not Innocent or whoever and whoever? They go, well, madam, actually, we don't care as long as it moves. So that uh, you, you need to find a way to either send to us, speak to the president, however you're going to do it, to create an atmosphere that is mandatory on our industries growing. That's my submission. The support that we can get from the National Assembly, we will come to you to sit down and uh, brainstorm on some of the trade policies that we think will uh, take the country forward. And we can look at them holistically so that we don't also disadvantage any sector of the economy. We will definitely be knocking on your doors very soon as we have a lot of ideas on what we think that we can pro uh, propose to take the country forward. On the uh, ease of doing business, well, currently, I'm also the vice chairman of the Ease of Doing Business um, Committee, and we're looking at how to reduce this cost of doing business in Nigeria. Unfortunately, like you mentioned, um, Honorable, there are lots of issues in the country. Insecurity, cost of power, logistics, multiple taxation, multiple roadblocks, and um, even the import tariffs, duties, and all of that. We, um, as a government, are very mindful of this and working assiduously using the ease of doing business that is being financed by the World Bank to ensure that we actually remove the bottlenecks and re reduce as much as we can the cost of doing business in Nigeria. This is so important that we must do that now. Because now, if the African Continental Free Trade Agreement kicks in and Nigeria is not, able, is not a minimum cost producer, will be disadvantaged. It means that we will continue to become, to be import dependent. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement means that all, the fact there is a removal of tariff between countries in Africa to trade. And we cannot reject any import that comes into Nigeria because it is against the agreement. We, are, we will be obliged to accept whatever comes into the country as a, as an import. Now, you can only import, I mean, so we would then be uh, leveraging on free trade to, re to reject some import because it's expensive. That's the law of competition, right? So if the products that are imported, even under the free trade agreement, is more expensive than the one you locally produce, consumers would naturally buy the ones that are cheaper using the you know, law of demand and supply. This is what we will leverage on. It therefore means that for Nigeria to be competitive, we must drop our cost of doing business. We must. It is, it, there is no brainer to it. So this ease of doing business thing is one thing I can assure you that I will champion with the best of my, of my strength to ensure that we find ways of dropping the cost of doing of manufacturing, especially in Nigeria. We must be competitive and the country must survive. We want to get, get to the point of being a net exporter, finished goods and manufactured goods, not a net importer of finished goods and manufactured goods. At the moment, we're exporting a lot of our raw material. The president has given a mandate that he wants to see export of value added of uh, semi-processed or even finished goods out of Nigeria, not raw materials. For us to be able to achieve this and be competitive or achieve a comparative advantage, we must drop our cost of doing business. So I want to assure you that this is on our front owner and we'll do all we can to do it. And this is why I was asking for extra budgetary support. Unfortunately, I would like to explain to our comrade who thinks that my budget is too high. So uh, we have 22 departments in the ministry, over 2,000 staff, and we are present in every state of the country. That overhead you're seeing is not even sufficient. In the 2023, I used my own personal money to do the travels that you've seen. 
because the monies that are even provided for this uh, investment drive by the ministry was not reflective of the inflation that we're currently seeing. Even the budget doesn't reflect the inflation that we're seeing and the inflationary pressures and the foreign exchange uh, devaluation that we're witnessing. I can submit it over and over that that fund is not sufficient to fund our activities and to do all the major work that we have to do as a ministry to turn around the economy. I would like to talk about the balance of trade. Your Excellency, when I entered the office, that was the first thing I asked for. And um, it is unfortunate to mention here that we do not have that record in the Ministry of Industry, Trade and, and Investment. That record probably exists, but not with the Ministry. It exists with the Customs and the Central Bank. If you notice, if you look in my budget line, there is a line item I provided there for trade intelligence. I propose to set up a trade intelligence unit right in my office. The purpose of the trade intelligence unit is to gather data. There is no way the Minister of Trade of any nation I know of can formulate or promulgate policies that is not based on data or that is not based on scientific um, 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 evidence. We don't have that data. The data that we can even get from custom is also not, is not, also not accurate because we, we are still using manual um, methods of collecting data rather than automated methods of collecting data. If you look at the most industrialized countries, when goods even come in, there is very minimal manual or human intervention with their goods that come in, their cargo. From the time, uh, from origination, when cargo leaves their, the, the point of origination to when they get into the destination port, there is automated tracking. Custom is already aware of what is coming in. When it comes in, it's scanned at the port of entry. So all of this data, the quantity you're bringing in, the, um, the item itself that you're bringing, the description, is available. It's in digital format. Now we are using AI technology to do a lot of data mining. Nigeria does not have it. I'm proposing to set up a start. The, the font I, it's not even about, we're managing the resources that we have to even situate, starting with having a database where we can even collate the data that is available and begin to analyze them and determine and, and even see just based on what we even have, what is our balance of trade? The balance of trade is what um, fits into your balance of payment. If you're a net exporter, your foreign reserves will, be, will go up. If you're a net importer, your foreign reserves will go down. For us to survive as a country, our balance of trade and balance of payment must be positive. It must take care of our import and have enough reserve to buffer any economic shock that could happen. We don't have that, Your Excellency. But I propose to create one in my ministry, and when I come again, by the grace of God, I'm sure I will come for maybe quarterly review and all of that. We should have started something, and I'll be able to give you the data and figures then. We are uh, interviewing or screen the CBN uh, management. I talk about the fact that there's no country in which government agencies, the monetary authority, the fiscal authority, and I specifically mention Ministry of Trade. So, Central Bank knows how much it gives for export, and they also monitor what is imported into the country. And you have a Ministry of Transportation, a Customs, you are, you are also supposed to share data. And I have heard ministers of finance and other agencies talking about balance of trade between us and these countries. To say that you are driving your car in the Ministry of Trade without, without dashboard. You don't even know your speed limits. Ah. So, this is, this, this is serious. Thank you very much. Well, we're working uh, on Chair, it, Your uh, Excellency. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The trade for 100 years is not a reason to continue to lament. The Third National Assembly and this President Tinubu did not come in to lament. Exactly. We must now take board measures to put a hold. How can we be? We are paying people. Look. Nobody enter Nigeria through air without immigration. Nobody go through road. At least those who are not uh, Baghdad, the former borders. We have data. It is better to have inaccurate data than to say you have no data at all. Sir, How do we measure whether we are progressing or we are regressing? Thank no. you, Chairman. That, that's what we are saying. We are saying. Why? When we have this number in the CPN, the Ministry of Finance, and um, 
the ex Minister of Finance, Budget Office, you should have them. We don't have to reinvent the wheel in every unit. That's why we have over bloated the federal bureaucracy and we are spending 60% on our recurrent. No, this is not sustainable. That's not the way to go. We do respect. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, honorable, honorable Minister, I can see that you have inherited a lot of problems on assuming the duty on this. Part of the problem is, uh, part of the problem are free trade zone. You know, after free trade zone, we have industrial parks, call it everything. When the last government voted a lot of uh, fund to develop the place today, as you can see, it's almost a scam. Fraud. If you look at industrial areas, which are, were established by the same federal government, the implementation was terrible. Go to Kano, where billions of naira have been invested, you find out nothing. And energy there is zero. And billions of naira have been invested by the same government through free trade zone. Uh, that's a NEPSA. Kano, nothing to write to my about. What you see there are individual industries, small, small industries, and they are just experiencing power problems there. Move to Calabar. They have started an energy, pro uh, energy project on Calabar, on this pretty zone there. Today, it's in darkness. And billions of naira are already gone. Then, we move to the father of all. That's uh, Leki. Leki, those are pretty zone. The individuals have already developed that area. You see Dangote, you see most of these Chinese and uh, Indians. So they said that there is a private port there. So my, my dear sister, the concept of a free trade zone is to make an area, designated area to be a foreign country, where you see adults, Nigerians, go inside and foreign investor go inside to produce many, many locally consumed things to Nigeria. But most of them are for export. 10% will pass through custom and pay small duty. But today, I don't think they are producing anything other than those foreigners that are trying their best. If you go to Tinka Island port, that area, there is another free trade zone there on the island. Mostly they are foreigners. The only areas where we have is uh, around uh, the other lake side. A lot of money has been voted. This year again you see billions of naira voted. I don't by by this by what federal government had already invested on this free I don't think Nigerians will lack any good uh, this will be enjoying good and cheap materials. We, we call for a, a serious investigation on what had happened in the last five years. And the Senate will be waiting for your investigation. Then you now go to all those other, commi other commissions, like Sugar Commission. Senator Adamu has said it all, but uh, we that headed that uh, trade and investment there, we talk down to his, uh, his locality where these sugar factories and agricultural products are supposed to be. When you get there today, it's just a, it's a carcass of his own, and the sugar commission that billions of naira voted to monitor that place. 
Then you now go to a port. You see a lot of sugar factories around the Kuwait. What is brought there today is raw sugar, just to package to the Nigerians. Where all these uh, very, uh, all these are found, uh, including the waivers and exception we have given, governments will be able to investigate very well, so that at least we move forward. Without investigating the what happened in the bar past, the Nigeria cannot move forward. There are a lot of serious investors that will want to come. They are the, are the exception. And even local investors want to invest in Nigeria. But when you think of the money bond industries, like Usoboro means, Casina Rolling means, these are all industries that have produced a lot of uh, jobs for a lot of people, and including traders. But in the last 25 years, nobody, th nobody thinks of them to bring them up. <coughs> All what we are seeing now are the iron road being manufactured through uh, scraps. So my dear sister and, uh, and my, my dear brothers, the automotive uh, industry too is not doing fine. They are mostly dominated by foreigners. Few Nigerians like uh, my brother in Nenewi, there are about two or three in Lagos. There are about three, or three Nigerians are there. But the ones that are around the Banako, they are just, they are majoring in importing finished goods, selling at a higher price to the people. Your ministry must look into it. If not, we will take action from here. So, my dear minister, you have started, you have given us all what we want, we intend to do to change the narratives, to set up modular industries that can bring jobs to all the young ones. And with this, we will be able to, I will refer you again to page 10 of your submission, your budget, your budget proposal, items, uh, items 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. We need a lot of clarification on this, so that you know the business as usual. So on this note, all of that we went with me, we will meet again so that I can stop for other Thank you, Mr. Co Chairman. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Minister, by way of closing, um, uh, uh, one is a waste and measures bill to make them an agency and empower them to do much more. And then we also have the Federal Produce Inspection Bill. We think that they also have the capacity to do a lot more. So it's, still, it's uh, before you, and uh, we would like to uh, implore your, um, your quick resolution <laughs> to pass the bill quickly. We also have the NEPSA, the free zone, and the oil free zone bill before you. We recall it just to check again that everything within it is as it should be, we will represent that. You know, the bill for the uh, free zone was uh, established in 1992. And the one for the oil and gas free zone was 1996. And we went through quite outdated, and that's why we need to review it, review it as part of the reform of the free zones that we're talking about. And hopefully those are some of the things that we can use to strengthen the free zone to do what it's supposed to do. I want to thank everyone that has co uh, made comments today in, the, uh, in this committee. We appreciate your advice, we appreciate your guidance, and most especially your support to making sure that the, this ministry takes the central role that it should take and does what it should do. I want to assure you again that we will do all we can to ensure that you see implementation. We are execution ready and we will do all it takes to give you 
results that you can see, visible results. God willing, we can do, we, I mean, we, whatever we can do, we will do. The problem we face in the country is beyond the ministry. It's multifaceted. In terms of uh, coordinating with other agencies, we do that actively and we're engaging as much as we can. For instance, tomorrow we're inviting you to come to the, trade, the National Trade Dialogue that we're hosting. Uh, sorry, on Thursday. It's an interministerial, interagency um, dialogue where we all come together to discuss issues that border on trade and how to resolve those issues. It's something that we're starting and we think that we will have this frequently to be able to you know, have that common ground where we can come up with ideas and issues or um, solutions to the issues that we have and resolving them quickly. So I invite you, that's on Thursday at... Um, we have the details, we'll send the details across to the chairman. Uh, thank you, and uh, I want to assure you that I will definitely leverage the support you've given me and this open platform to come to you for more advice and more initiatives that can move this country forward. Thank you very much. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.